what else can we use loop for? So I've talked about meeting notes and meeting series. Now I come out to my Orlando project workspace again. I can see a few other things that I've created within this workspace. One would be kind of a resource document, like just some kind of, if, if there's documentation, but that would be nice to have in a collaborative format or if not finalized yet, doing it in loop can be a really good option. And if you put it in the workspace here with the project, it's gonna be very you know easy to find right alongside other project stuff. In this case, I did sort of a dummy project charter for this mystery project that we were doing. It's uh, for a new software product rolling out across multiple sites in Orlando. But because of all the emojis and, and formatting, you can, you can make it look pretty if you want to. And I would pull this up, say, at a meeting uh, at a project kickoff and make sure we're aligned across the team around all these different pieces of the project itself, timeline, team members, stakeholders, and budget. So informational pages can be really nice to have in loop. If I wanted to get some input from people on it, it's very easy to uh, ask for input just by tagging them within the loop page. Like, hey, I keep tagging myself just because I'm the one that has access to Caroline. Does this sound right for a project summary? And then my user account would get the notification that someone had typed to me in Teams and I could come in and directly add it or, or you know, add my own input to this piece. If there's not as much you want to type or you'd rather uh, leave something that's more clearly tagged as a comment, you can just right click over where the cursor is and add a comment as well. And this would be, you know, kind of the comment functionality. Um, I'm not sure about this. What do you think? And tag someone in the comment, you know, the same way you would be used to. And then people can reply to comments and leave a thread. So I like doing it this way because it more clearly calls out what is a comment. Um, and then that can be deleted or removed if a comment gets resolved. If you do want to get it to a more sort of finalized version where it's not open to being edited or collaborated on. There's not a way to like lock a loop page so that you can't make changes on it. It's just, do you have access to it or not? You can, however, actually do a print and PDF export version of a page. And so, you know, if you do that print option and decide to save it as a PDF or print it, this would be a more sort of static file if you wanted that version of a loop page. It's going to, that just gives you a sense of what it would look like. Another kind of loop page that I have found to be helpful are other pieces related to a project where you need to be getting input or have people interact with them, but you can do it in a little more structured way than just adding comments on the loop page. <laughs> a good example might be providing a way for people to get more structured feedback and track who's giving feedback and who hasn't. I've done this example with clients before actually, where essentially we just create a table and again, I'm not going to do all the steps of how to do all these things, but most things in loop, you do the backslash and then you get your menu of all the things you can insert. So one of the things you can insert is a table. I created a table here. And this page, if you scroll down a little bit, has the instructions about how to use this page. Enter your name in the column, provide the date, give whatever details of the feedback you need to give, and then there's a status column here that will be changed as someone reviews your feedback. It's a relatively simple table, but another nice thing you can do with a loop page um, to use for tracking. These tables have a little bit of functionality here too. Like if you use this kind of column, you'll get actual counts of how many things are in each category. And there's a few different formatting things you can do for columns. You also have the option to add rules for tables. So that's, an, again, maybe a future video, but we're adding more and more functionality to a lot of these pieces to make them useful. It's something that you can just have right in here in your project workspace, very easy to find. Um, and this is one that I've seen have a lot of success and get a lot of good interaction with. There's also the option here, um, still using that container idea for a workspace, you can add URLs and file uploads to a workspace. Another tool that we like to use at Echolocity a lot is Smartsheet. I might still want to do my crate or raid log in Smartsheet rather than using a loop page for it for, for whatever reason. If I've got that, I can actually just put the link for that, that crate log here 
it's going to open it directly for me in Smartsheet when I click on it. And that is just a create new and you add a link. Same idea with you can just upload a file. Um, this is like a SharePoint file. Uh, so this is like a Word document that is saved in, you know, my Word. And I'm just keeping it here in this workspace or I'm adding it to this workspace here as a resource for the project if anybody needs it to refer to.